guys, so for the next three days, I want to dedicate my post to celebrating different women in STEM that have made huge breakthroughs in science and technology. And for the first day, I want to dedicate it to Annie Jump Cannon. Now, Cannon was a scientist who laid the foundation for the classification of different stars. She did this by taking a prism and creating a light spectrum. This later led to her and her team classifying stars based on their chemical composition. It is incredible and it has made a huge breakthrough in astrophysics. Thanks guys. Two of Women in STEM, I'd like to dedicate it to Henrietta Swan Leavitt. Leavitt was an astronomer who found the connection between the luminosity of variable stars and their period. And this led to the identification of 1800 stars. This also helped lead astronomers even today that are able to measure the distances of very far away galaxies. And this led to the understanding of the expansion of our universe. So for your research, Henrietta, today is dedicated to you. For day three of Women in STEM, I dedicate it to Cecilia Payne. Cecilia Payne was an astronomer who found the relationship between the spectral class of a star and its temperature. And this led to the discovery of our sun being composed of mainly hydrogen. Now, Cecilia Payne was actually studying at Cambridge University, but she actually was denied getting her degree because she was a woman. So in 1923, she ended up moving to America to complete getting her PhD in astronomy. She ended up actually being the first person to get a PhD in astronomy at Radcliffe University. So Cecilia Payne today is dedicated to you. Thank you very much. So because I've had such great feedback from everyone on Instagram for my three days of women in STEM, I thought I would just kind of continue it. I keep talking about all the amazing uh, female scientists out there that have made major breakthroughs. Um, and not just astrophysics, but also uh, all the other sciences. Um, so I thought I would talk about first Vera Rubin. So Vera Rubin uh, was actually doing studies on the rotation rate of galaxies, and she found that the more outer regions of galaxies were rotating a lot faster than expected. And this eventually led to the theory of dark matter. Um, so due to the evidence that she had found of the rotation rates of the, the halo of galaxies, which is that outer region of galaxies, um, being at such a rapid rotation rate, this later led to um, the conclusion and, and evidence of dark matter. Uh, now I know that there's a lot of other theories out there debunking dark matter or talking about how dark matter doesn't exist. Uh, I am aware of them. I actually did a video right up here um, on those uh, other theories including emergent gravity um, and many other theories. Um, but it's incredible how Vera Rubin's research ended up leading into dark matter. Then we also have Marie Curie, also known as Madame Curie. She was a Polish physicist who was the first woman to ever get a Nobel Prize. It was amazing. She actually got her Nobel Prize in her research on radioactivity um, and later created um, x-rays. She actually was able to create the x-ray machines that we're able to use today um, in hospitals and in our doctors. Um, I mean, anyone who had a broken bone um, are very thankful for the fact that x-ray machines actually work. I remember when I broke my hands uh, playing football, true story. I broke this hand right here, this, this uh, was a metacarpal fracture of this digit and the doctor actually just did a, a, an x-ray of my fingers and was like, oh, you're totally fine. Like you just have a, a you know, a sprained finger. And I'm like, bro, like doctor, like I trust you, but uh, my finger is behind my other finger. Like there's definitely something wrong there. But um, anyway, so then he did an x-ray of my whole hands and was like, yeah, you're going to need surgery. Next woman I wanted to talk about was Nancy G. Roman right here to my shoulder. She's currently 92 years old. She's still alive. And she was uh, the first woman to have an executive position at NASA. She also was the first chief executive officer um, of astronomy at the Space Science Center at NASA headquarters. So that was pretty incredible. She ended up getting her PhD in astrophysics from the University of Chicago in 1949 and then by 1959 uh, begun her work at NASA, at NASA Goddard, uh, which she ended up finishing her, her career at NASA Goddard uh, Space Flight Center. And um, she's always been an advocate for women in science and I think that she's super admirable. She is also known as the mother of Hubble, um, or the Hubble Space Telescope that is. Um, she did a lot of her research in the planning of the Hubble Space Telescope, which is why this Lego set for the Women in NASA set um, is her with the Hubble Space Telescope. 
Um, so she's very admirable and I really look up to her for a lot of her research and for who, who, what she stands for. I think it's, it's incredible. This next woman of STEM is a superwoman. She, I, I look up to her so much and she is so admirable to me um, for many, many different reasons. Uh, not specifically because she's just a dancer. Um, okay, there's a lot of other things in there. Um, but really because she's pursued so many different uh, paths in life and I think that it's super admirable in everything that she's done and also how she accomplished everything So this is May Jemison, which I also have a little Lego of her so she um, Is a NASA astronaut and she actually ended up going to Stanford University at age 16 it is <laughs> it's like incredible. Um, it's super insane. Like I, I can't even imagine going to Stanford University at age 16. Um, I didn't even know myself at age 16. But she went to Stanford University at age 16. She ended up completing her degree, or getting her bachelor's in chemical engineering and African studies. She ended up working both at uh, the, the Peace Corps. She did studies um, out in Africa. She ended up uh, working for NASA and out of 2,000 applicants to go on board the Space Shuttle Endeavor back in 1992 uh, to conduct research for over 190 hours in space um, on like medical experiments, doing uh, astrobiology research. She did so many different tests and this, by doing this, made her the first woman of color to have actually gone to space. So this, <laughs> this resume, this life of accomplishments that she has achieved is extremely inc incredible and it is such a good representation for all the women out there uh, that want to pursue something in the sciences and want to pursue an amazing career um, from doing everything from dancing to to the Peace Corps. Now this isn't all that she ended up doing. Jemison ended up starting two technology companies, started a, an international space science camp for 12 to 16 year olds and she, at the same time she was also an environmental studies professor. It is incredible how much she has under her umbrella of achievements, and it is oh, no! Due to everything falling apart right now, I'm going to continue this video next time. Bye guys! I'll make a Women in STEM part two. <laughs>